Ladies and gentlemen, Grant Gershon. Here he is, the one, the only, here he is. It's happening, it's happening here in LA and worldwide, globally. It's the global phenomenon of the Grant Gershon Show. And uh, uh, may I present to you, uh, Peter Sellers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so after 20 years, Grant is finally ready to do something serious, right? Okay, here we go. <laughs> what are you thinking, Grant? Well, you know, I, I think first off, I should preface this by saying uh, that, this, uh, that this project is at the gleam in our eye phase. Um, so uh, uh, you'll be hearing us talk about this project. Uh, we had exactly one rehearsal with, uh, with half of the singers on uh, Tuesday, just to get a little bit of a taste of what this might be. We'll be, uh, we'll be starting rehearsals in earnest in the fall, and, uh, and we'll be kind of dreaming and imagining uh, a lot of different aspects of the piece. But Peter, can I just tell them a little bit about shoots? Would you and, lay it out? So uh, this, the, 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 we're calling this, this presentation, as Jean mentioned, music to accompany a departure. Uh, and that's partly because that's what this is, but it's also partly because the title of the musical work that is the, the fundamental basis of this is uh, almost unpronounceable. Uh, even for German speakers, it's the Musikalische Exequien by Heinrich Schütz, uh, written in 1635. Uh, you can work on that, Grant. And it's right. And, I mean, it's an absolutely uh, extraordinary piece. And just to preface as well, with Lagrime di San Pietro, um, I, was the, I was the one that, uh, that brought that to, to Peter in 2011 and we and Peter told me it would be the hardest thing we, any of us either ever did if we did it and we did it um, in this case Peter you were the one that brought the musicalische exequia to me it's one of those pieces i think similar to lagrime where you know musicologists and early music specialists know this know this piece and know how extraordinary it is and for the rest of us at best it's something that we're aware of from uh, uh, you know various recordings or footnotes in uh, musicological journals uh, and it's just been a complete revelation to me and it feels like the perfect piece for uh, the time that we're in as well and so Peter, I'd love, I mean, if you would maybe just talk a little bit about this. And you have a long history with Schutz as well, right? With, we go back. Yeah. Uh, just to say, uh, Schutz, just to be crude, is the Bach of the previous century, the great German uh, writer of choral music uh, and, and the, the great musician. I mean, the great, great musician. The musician, he lived to the age of 80. And when he was a kid, he showed up in, in Venice and hung around Gabrielli and the, 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 the St. Mark's Cathedral and with the, all of the antiphonal brass and choirs, multiple choirs, multiple brass, like music that was 3D and surround and that lavish Italian thing. And so when he was a kid, he went back to Germany and wrote all these incredible Psalms of David that was music Germany never heard. This lush, delicious, ripe texture and brass coming from there, from there, everybody answering everybody. You're inside this musical universe that is exploding with beauty and power and glory. It's amazing. And he was the great choral composer of the 17th century and then by 1635, his life changed. The plague and the Thirty Years' War simultaneously. And for the second half of his life, he wrote pieces for six performers. And when he was 80, he wrote a St. John Passion, a Matthew Passion, a Luke Passion, each one for six performers. And he had to learn to put all of that that he put into these multiple choirs into a handful of people and invest in people, the ones who are left, and say, okay, we'll move forward with what we have. This piece comes exactly at the midpoint of his career, just at the point where, like where we are now, where a bunch of resources are disappearing, where a bunch of human beings are disappearing. 
And so suddenly you're working for a reduced situation and anybody who can even show up in the audience, you're so grateful that they're still here. Schutz spent most of his, the rest of his life getting music from one country to another through the borders as the war moved and also as people died, how to replace them and bring up a new generation. This piece is a very special in that he knew a public official in Dresden, a kind of a local uh, 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 mayor, who was an avid musician and singer, and who knew he was dying. And so he compiled with Schutz 27 quotes from the Bible and from hymns about how to die well. He then commissioned an artist to sculpt a coffin out of copper and carve and inscribe these quotes, one over the head, one over the heart, over the hands. And so the coffin gives you an image of a human body that is a living spiritual being, even in death. And that when the corpse is laid in the body, each of these quotations is vibrating over the feet and what it means to walk in the path, over the hands, and what it means to do good acts. And for his funeral, he asked Schutz to set these 27 texts to music. When he died and was placed in the coffin, Schutz made the ceremony. The first part is this incredible first German requiem. And it's very brief. Each of these sentences is one person coming forward, two people, three, a family of four. No big choral sound, but just individuals and small groups coming forward to remember someone and to offer spiritual comfort. And that opening section is just one of the most amazing pieces of music because it, it flows in a way you just don't expect. It does feel like an occasion where people are just stepping up voluntarily to say something. And so you can't anticipate anything that's coming next. And he takes a whole German, he takes the whole Catholic Mass and does it in 22 minutes. And you didn't know that was the Kyrie because it lasted 35 seconds. Because it's not about going on and on. It's about how do we move forward. And so the whole piece is trying to move forward, trying to come through this. And it's incredible that all the words were chosen by the person who's in the coffin. And who didn't let even his wife know that this coffin existed till two days before he died. Schutz then creates the second piece, which is after the funeral oration, the little group of singers gets together on either side of the coffin and they sing back and forth. And you have music flowing over the coffin and people surrounding it. And then the third movement is just one of the most <laughs> incredible things. Uh, Schutz has trios, has one little group of chorus around the coffin, and then the rest of the chorus is in trios of two women and one man. And they're placed in the back, in the loft, up and up and up and up in little trios, and outside the church. And as the little group around the coffin is singing, they're answered by voices in the air, in the huge space. And you realize this person is no longer in the coffin, but this voice is now everywhere. Everywhere in space, is leaving, has left, but is still present. And it's a work of sculpture in time and space and music. It's just an incredible piece. And of course, I'm just sitting here in LA saying, okay, how do we come together? Two years we've been apart. 
two years where what does it mean to bring people together when it's still nervous making? And not just bring together physically, but how do we come together as a society again? Because that's really what we've forgotten to do. How do we come together for each other in some deeper way? So for me right now, it's not about doing opera. <laughs> it's about making ceremonies and rituals that we need to be human again. And that we need to do together and to invite people to a ceremony that is about restoring a type of humanity that doesn't happen on Zoom. And share the space in the most, in the ways that make the space alive and that we don't take that space for granted. And meanwhile, so many of us, speaking personally, and I know people here have experiences, I couldn't be with my dad when he died. We couldn't be anywhere near each other. What does it mean that somebody leaves the world alone what does it mean the family can't be there? You can't whisper something in their ear or hold their hand or give them any kind of comfort when they're going through what they're going through. You can't be in the room. And what does it mean to leave the world alone? So for me, this is such a, a deep, deep, sadness and grief through the whole planet right now that so many people have not been able to say goodbye. And we have this loss, and at the same time we have no way to gather, no way to acknowledge it, no way to just share what we went through alone. So the idea of this project is just to create something that we can share and something that does have some comfort in it, something that does acknowledge what no politician can acknowledge, what the media can acknowledge, but nobody can even begin to touch what we've been through. And so to me, that's why artists exist, is somebody has to try and say, this is what this feels like. And can we recognize and acknowledge that together? So... <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the project. And then I thought, now who could do this? Uh, maybe Grant Gershon and the LA Master Chorale. It, it's, uh, it, it's such a piece of compassion, right? And, and empathy. Um, and it really is about a, a pointing a, a way forward. And it's also about being with each other. It, you know, Peter, when you're talking about the, the last movement and these trios of voices, one of the things that is so uh, particularly beautiful about it is shoots himself in the score. He says that the, that the two high voices are seraphic beings and the lower voice is actually the voice of the person who passed. And so the idea is that we're, that we're, um, that we're all being joined together, um, that we're that 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 none of us is alone as we're as we're departing. That that uh, that we are embraced, and that and musically, that's exactly what happens through the course of that last movement. And I just wanted to share. I've got this um, the the score here, which has Schutz himself wrote a lot. Uh, uh, about this piece, it, it's one of the things that's extraordinary. Usually, composers, especially in the you know 16th, 17th century, you don't you know you just have to make up what might have been going on for them because they don't really re leave much of a written record. Um, in this case, Schütz wrote this beautiful elegy to his friend um, uh, Heinrich, who was his benefactor that he wrote the piece for, and he says he starts it with a with this question. He says. Has Almighty God not already righteously rebuked and punished us enough for our grievous sin and great misdeeds by the furies of war, so that whatever good had previously existed now lies trodden underfoot and destroyed, and all order is dispersed, law turned upside down, and schools stand bare, churches in ruin, 
did this misfortune also need to befall us that, that you should be taken from us, thereby increasing our sorrow and our distress in these dark times? And, you know, it doesn't take a huge <laughs> leap of, of intellect to extrapolate what was happening in 1635 to, to the 21st century. And, uh, and it's all by way of saying that, that this music is... Again, it's about compassion. Um, it's about being there with each other. And I think that, to me, uh, Peter, as you were saying, this, uh, the, what we're working towards in this project is for all of the singers, for all of us to be with each other um, as we create this together and, uh, and to provide something for, for the audience, for the listeners, for the people that are with us that is not just a performance, but it is a ceremony, and um, and it's a way of of creating space together. And I think again, you know, what is classical music for? Is it just for entertainment, or do we need it for other reasons? And can, as classical musicians, we step forward at a time to be helpful, and not just say, "Please keep supporting us," but be there in support of other people and have a role to play in a society and a function <laughs> and a usefulness. So it's not an extra, we are essential workers <laughs> and we're trying to offer something essential that is not available in any other form. And that's the degree of comfort and the degree of solidarity that music creates. And there is truly nothing in the world like it. And so to me, it's also the COVID has come as a message to the concert world, to the opera world, to all these worlds that we took for granted. And the message was, you better look at yourselves closely <laughs> if you're going to continue. <laughs> And to me, I think we do have to play a very real role in rebuilding and in moving forward together when everything right now is about dividing us. What does it take to move forward together and to create the way in which and a place for people who disagree about everything to be sitting near each other and to be part of the same body of the human race. So for me, this work is also, um, as it was for Schutz at the beginning of the war, the Thirty Years' War, what can we do as artists that's not self-indulgent in any way? It's the opposite. This is not an indulgence, it's a necessity. And can we focus ourselves that way in this period? Peter, I'm thinking about the process in Lagrimé, and uh, you know, the, one of the, I mean, we've, so we've worked together. Uh, I was counting, I think uh, the first time was in 1988, before many of you were born. Uh, so we've, we've known each other a long time. Uh, and. And one of the things that is so remarkable is the way that you work with singers. And, and, I'm, and now I'm thinking specifically about Lagrimé because um, we spent, I think we had 28 rehearsals before the first performance. Just to put that into context, usually in a Master Corral uh, perform, uh, performance, we have maybe four or five, six, if it's really challenging work. Um, but. The process in Lagrimade, like with you know, every time that you work with singers and specifically a chorus, it seems to me that it's about unlocking something that you can't get to um, without the benefit of time and the benefit of trust and, um, and singers who are open to that process. And I, I, the reason that I bring that up is because it seems to me this piece, you know, similarly, there's so much under the surface, you know, on the surface, the, the notes on the page are, you know, are relatively simple, um, even compared to Lagrimé. Um, 
it's, you know, it, it doesn't have quite the complexity of texture and, um, and chromaticism and, and all of this. It's very, very focused, but uh, I think as, as we'll discover when we have a few singers with us in a little bit, there's so much under the surface and so much in the way that Schutz is responding in a really personal way to the, to the words in the text. And I, I just wondered if you might talk about, I mean, it's the benefit of time, isn't it? I mean, the difference between just throwing something on stage and, and living with it. I mean, the, the, the crisis in the world that we're living in is created by one thing, it's called human beings. And the solution for the crisis is called human beings. You have to invest in people. And sometimes it's a long road because most people have been disempowered or hurt or damaged or have such issues. And they're fighting themselves, let alone the people around them. And you have to spend time with somebody <laughs> and work through all that to find, you know, each of us is created as, div we're all divine beings. It's in there. <laughs> but there's a lot of stuff on top. <laughs> and Bach and Schutz, Lasso wrote for the divine spark. <laughs> that we're all carrying. And so in order to perform their music, we have to find that spark. We have to share that spark. And that spark has to light a lot of candles. And so that's what you have with your kids, patience, to work through the good days and the bad days, because you believe in them. And that what it means to believe in a human being consistently and to know they're capable of more than any of us have, have seen yet. It just means we have to keep searching and create this space where people start opening themselves because we all go through life super closed because we're armor plated because we never know what's coming next. So we're going through life as Humvees, <laughs> you know? And what does it mean to take off the armor, to unfold ourselves, to acknowledge things, to admit things we would never admit to, to actually getting real? It takes a little bit of time for most people to unfold. And that's why Bach wrote these complicated phrases <laughs> that you can't just sing, you can't do sight reading. <laughs> You've got to actually work it out. And the music has that complexity in it, in it for a reason. It's, we are gonna challenge you, <laughs> and you have to challenge yourself if you're gonna sing this. So it's not just hard music, it's a life challenge. And that's why I try and make the staging as difficult, as impossible as possible, uh, <laughs> so that... <laughs> It, but all, it's all to distract us, is that? Yeah, from, but it's all how hard the music is, right? And 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 then to also build a community, which is when people spend time together and go through something difficult together, they're strong, and you feel that. You feel that whenever people have been through something difficult together. That's when we become powerful as people. Is going through something hard together. So that's what each of these projects is a record of and is a exemplary, you know, is a showing human beings what it's like to come out the other side. And that's what the Schutz music is, is it's taking you through the process. Each of these sentences that, uh, that uh, Schutz and Heinrich put together, they're about how to die well. And how to die well is to live well. And so it's about, well, if I'm living this way, then I'm going to die this way. And it's about how to face pain. It's about how to face everything that is unbearable. 
and how to bear it, which is, of course, the lesson of dying, <laughs> where we are all tested in a very supreme way, both the person who's going through dying and the people who are caring for that person. So it's the ultimate test in all of our lives. So to have 27 sentences about how to do that well and have people sing over and over again, trying to work their way through how hard that is and finally come out at a place where they can say, I know what this is, which is what the concerted pieces do in this piece. They start with something none of us can under none of us can comprehend. And they go through it and go through it and go through it. And by the end you think, I think I know what this is. You know. Anyway, it's so for me, it's working on these projects is just a life process. It's not about music, it's not about, you know, <laughs> tuning. I mean it's about all those things. But what we're doing is something, a bigger project together. And that's where I feel sports are not about sports and music is not about music. <laughs> They're all trying to point us to larger realities of what it means when human beings transcend themselves. Can I get an amen? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know how much time we have left, but Peter, I, I'm just wondering, you have this long history with shoots, and I'm thinking about Craig Smith and, and, um, and kind of your early formative days, and I know that that, that was, I mean, I'm just wondering, because for a lot of us, we kind of came to this composer later, because you, you go through like all of the, you know, Mozart and, and, and Brahms and Beethoven and Bach and, and um, all those German guys. And, uh, and then Schutz is like lower down the list for most of us. But you, I mean, you were just a, a, a young sprout. And I'm, I'm just wondering if you could share a little bit of that. Uh, just uh, my, my growing up musically was, uh, I, I was invited by the singers who were in the chorus of Emanuel Church in Boston to work with them, starting when I was 22 or 21. And so I just showed up at their invitation. And they were the ones that set the program. And, and the program was a Bach cantata every Sunday, which they sang in the service at Emanuel Church on Newbury Street in Boston. And the church had, as well as the weekly cantata, so just you're singing Bach every week. You are going through the complete Bach cantatas five, six times. And you learn that music is for people who are going through something difficult. And those Bach cantatas are about talking people down off bridges, about people with addiction, about, you know, those cantatas are working therapy sessions and how to put your life back together. And Bach does it in 20, 25 minutes every week. And that was very clear because Emanuel Church had two branches of Al Alcoholics Anonymous, two branches of Narco uh, Narcotics Anonymous, a Salvadoran refugee program that was part of the Underground Railroad of all these people escaping El Salvador during the Reagan years and arriving with a refuge in that church and a shelter for battered women and two homeless shelters. So the musical program was serving all of those projects. And so you were performing for people who had serious life issues, did not know where the next meal was coming from, or are escaping a totally abusive situation, or are trying to imagine a new future, or have decided to end their lives. And then you see, oh right, music is here to function. And Craig Smith, who ran the Bach cantatas, was obsessed with Schutz. <laughs> and so with Lorraine Hunt and Sanford Sylvan and all these incredible singers, almost every week there was also Schutz in the service. <laughs> and so I grew up with these Schutz motets that, you know, these beautiful singers just 
poured themselves into, but truly Bach, at least the soloists are, you know, are, are stepping out with a kind of virtuosic presence. The Schutz, everybody is there to serve. There's no ego, none. You are there to help out. And the way Schutz puts the chorus together, these chorales together, it's so satisfying to sing because it makes perfect sense in your voice and the harmonies are so deeply satisfying that you feel taken care of. But it's also nobody stepping out ahead of anybody else. It is this deeply collective sense of well-being that is overwhelming. And that was Schutz's incredible gift. So I grew up with wall-to-wall Schutz. <laughs> and so... Bizarrely, in the first year of the pandemic, I just went back into Schutz. And so I listened to almost every Schutz piece in the first half of the first year of the pandemic and just lived there. Some, some of the Emmanuel music recordings of the Schutz are still available. They're incredible with these incredible singers, but also just the feeling. And, uh, and it was music that... I needed to survive in those first months. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's when you called me. I oh, think, amazingly, uh, I, it was a, just- Very early on. It was on a mistaken and, dial. Oh, it was just like, you know, <laughs> that's the trouble with iPhones, is you're, you're, you're just, your thumb touches something and suddenly it was you, Grant. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I made the mistake of picking up. <laughs> and here we are. Which mostly you never do, okay. Anyway, so now it's my turn to interview you, Grant. <laughs> Look at the time. <laughs> anyway, everybody's here because they know what this man is. And, and this man is a great, 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 one of my great heroes. And the person you look up to, to take care of something difficult with consummate grace, consummate understanding, deep humanity, and a sense of beauty that's unmatched, and I do not know another classical musician who has Grant's sense of beauty. Just sheer beauty of sound as healing practice. Not as display, but as in this world where we, we are surrounded by so many things that are very badly done, to actually see somebody, see a group of people with Grant do something so beautifully with the fineness of craft, the fineness of imagination, and these ears that listen so deeply. So um, I did accidentally dial Mr. One in a Million um, <laughs> because the Schutz, you know, the Lagrime was such an incredible experience for all of us. And then what do you do after that? You know, uh, the collector works of Stockhausen. Um, the, um, um, but weirdly, it was odd because this is one generation later from the Lagrimé. So it's a kind of, it's oddly the next step from where we've been on Lagrimé. And it, it actually makes sense as a, you know, the real next step. I mean, but Grant didn't know Schutz. So Grant, would you just say, what did it take to get on the Schutz train? <laughs> wow, that's a, <laughs> that's a very strange sounding question somehow. Uh, well, you know, Peter, first off, uh, you guided me to those recordings with Lorraine and Sandy and all of those incredible singers from, and Craig Smith from Emmanuel. Um, and, uh, and that was the beginning. And, and of course, the one thing as a performing musician that, uh, that we had in abundance in April of 2020, it was time. <laughs> and so I was able to, to do a deep dive and then to get to know this piece a bit. And, um, and, and you know, I'll, I'll just say that, I mean, for me, stepping back a moment, you know, one of, one of the real blessings of my life has been able to be able to work with you, Peter, and to find so many things within myself 
that I just didn't even know were there. And for the singers as well that, that we work with and that we love so much. Um, you have, trans I mean, you've transformed us all and we just, we are so uh, grateful and, and we feel such warmth and, um, and generosity of spirit that's been unlocked for us from our collaborations together. And this is, this is just the next step in, in that journey. And so I'm so grateful to be on it with you again. Um, and I think with that, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take the last word. <laughs> and because I think uh, we're going to, to take a short break and then reconvene with 12 singers from the, from the chorale and sing a little bit of the Musikalische Exequien by, by Heinrich Schütz. <laughs> So thank you all, and Peter, thanks. So we, we chose two relatively brief passages from the first movement of the piece to, uh, to try out with you all today. Uh, and they're very contrasting. The, the, the first one is probably the, the single most desolate moment uh, in the first movement of the piece, and, uh, and the, the text is basically saying all around us, everywhere here, is, is a veil of tears or, or a, a valley of sorrow. Um, anguish, um, misery, and, and distress is, is everywhere around us. Um, and it says that, uh, that you know, those of us who remain have but a little time, uh, and even to think on the things that are happening around us um, causes inner strife and inner turmoil. The other, the other thing we'll do is a little sadder. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's give it a let's give it a whirl. Make sure that everything is real to us and real to our 
experience. And, um, and you know, the words in this passage mean so long. Just to say that the opening words are in the time that we've been. Just that some of you guys should be portrayed in the long form. I would just, I mean, you know, the super, super deep. I would love to get into this next phrase, which is, uh, which is pretty intense, which is just to say, um, fear, suffering, oh. Let's do this. Oh, I feel so much better. Uh, okay, now everyone. <laughs> Just to say, uh, so it means that fear, suffering, and affliction are all around us. I would love it if you guys maybe, Grant, you think that there could be a little more of a space between those phrases? So. You say over here we've got fear and affliction and sorrow and, and cloudiness and then silence and then you guys say we've got that over here too and really like talk about where we are and just compare Could we try that? That would be really cool. And and then just just the thought of and then, as Grant said, it's the phrase of we had remain or here so briefly. We don't have it all. So I'd love to feel that that it's to incline a zeit, and then suddenly my things just shout out. We have to work, we have to be up against every damn thing. And I want to know it's nothing but adversity, it's nothing but impossible. We have to fight and fight and fight and fight and fight and fight and fight. So I would love it if that phrase just came out, fight. We're here for not long and we've got to fight for every damn second. And then, and then, guys, save it for a moment and say, when, and when you think about it, it makes you Fight. It, it comes out in violence in yourself, which is the last phrase, is if you think about it, every minute of your life you're fighting. And so what does it mean to just bring that fight home? So I would love it if we could just let the, really explode the, 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 the Kleinazite and then really get the Muslim super, Super scary. And then, if you could split the phrase and do the bedent phrase in a thoughtful way, and then just. It's, it's imminent strike. Right. It's like, Grant, I'm enjoying working with you, but it's a little irritating. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take your microphone away. <laughs> <laughs> just to say, you know, just that, 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 that edge is there. In that last part. And the, and the strike is short and, and brutal. Maybe. Anyway, just a. Yeah, that's true. Sure. Just a sure. Just sure. Just sure. <laughs>
Super beautiful. The Yammer talk. I just want to, of course, get to the place when, when you're really crying, you can barely speak. So that it really starts with this sound that you're crying. And it's very, very, very hurt. And like you can barely make it through the day. Then, what is that? That is fear, that is anxiety, that is name those things. Name those things. But let that first phrase be unbearable and you can't make it through. You're not going to make it. And if the temperature of that is through tears. And then this is what we're doing. Fear, anxiety, anger, and name those things, and then you got to name them back. Fear, anxiety, anger. And then if we can just get the, um, oh God, yes. It, then we stay, the, one, the ones who are left, we have a short time. Voller, if Voller or Muzelike would explode again. But don't diminue it on the end. Get the T. Muzelikeite. Let that T be so vicious. I want the T to be battle cry. The T should just be shocking. Wuzelikite, and then coming underneath that, guys, if you think about it, Imar and strike, build to strike, and I get the key explosion on that first strike, and then everybody together, we only have a short amount of time here, damn it! And we're fighting every second! Build that so that Two T, just before two seventy one, is huge and scary, and you have no time. And then, and Musella can just let it burn. Don't let it be nice. Let it be actual. Everything's a battle. It's everything is a battle. And then, and then the last, then the way you start to shape the, all these fighting, all, every phrase is fighting against every other phrase in here. Could we just, the, the last, the last stanza, you know, two, don't blend the vocal lines. Let's have each go against the other. So maximum fighting. Yes. 
So we get these contracts of the portrait. Well, should we go on to the next thing? Sure. Sure. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's great. Is that okay, you guys? You guys are so beautiful. Wow. So the, the, other, the other passage that we have is this is the, the end of the first movement of the piece. And, uh, and this is. It starts uh, uh, by saying, by saying literally, he said to me, and then we're hearing, um, we're, we're hearing the voice of God say, I'm with you, um, I will make you, I will, I will be there with you, I'll give my whole life to you, um, I, will, I will make you whole, uh, I will make you blessed. Uh, and so that's the, the piece ends with, us being there for each other and in this, this beautiful position of empathy and, and compassion.
Uh, this is the Fred Gershon and the Master Philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the sound of I will be with you and no oh, compassion. Okay, he's got it. Oh. Start with this take my hand, this beautiful statement. And then lead someone into their own domain. Right? And then it's so beautiful, everyone, that the way Schutz has said, the, the, the phrase is, I give you my, my whole self. So what it means to give, should so I give, 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 and so just to feel this gift, this gift that I could just get an example God's my whole self and my whole self. Hello, I'm like every time you see that, I'm going to say a little more than that. By the time we get there, it's full self. Oh, sorry. <laughs> blast off here, just that it repeats, I give, I give, I give you my whole self. I just love to hear, it can be, it can be, can Build that, build that, build that. I want to feel what giving is. I want to hear what giving is, and then finally your whole self. I want to get as a Zelber Gans, Gans for you. Right? Just go there, go there, go there. And then, uh, and then you walk up into, if you don't mind, I'm just, for what we did in the previous one, just get to, and I will defend you. I will join you in your struggle. So don't make that too tea party. You know, I want to know, no, we're in the struggle together. I'm shoulder to shoulder with you. So Bill, I'm giving you my whole self. I'm giving you my whole self. I'm giving you my whole self. We are shoulder to shoulder. So we've really come a long way from taking someone by the hand in that second phrase. And then, I love your subito for them taught, which is just super gorgeous, just gorgeous. That when they get super quiet for death is swallowed up in life. Death is swallowed up in life is such an amazing phrase, right? Because in fact, the life force is just continuing. And so death is actually just part of life. It's actually part of life. So if, that, if I could just feel the beauty of that, that death is swallowed up in life, rather than you know some lizard eating a lizard that's larger than itself. Uh, it's not the image I really want. <laughs> I really want. I just want this idea that Yes, everything in the world, we are here. We're alive because we're eating somebody, who, some being that gave their life, whether it's a cucumber or a chicken. We have another day on Earth because what we're swallowing is life itself. 
and that means that we have another day. And death is just actually the circle of life. So if we could just understand that without grief and let that be really beautiful, that every being sacrifices itself so another being can live. And then this beautiful Unschul Trecht, um, I love that you guys sing it very, very serious, very dark, because in fact, I just want to get not sins in a church sense, but sins in the sense that all the things you've done, that you can't face yourself. All those horrible things you've done that you can't face. And someone says, I know about those things, and I'm gonna help you with them. And it's gonna be okay. <laughs> so if we could just get the sin part, not to just be a word, but to be things you're not proud of. And somebody says, okay, that's gonna be all right. And so, warden, warden, what is warden? It's forever. It's forever. So I just wanna get, not I'm gonna give you a free pass for this afternoon, <laughs> but forever. So if I could get Warden to be forever, forever. You know, when I'm saying, you know, when Jesus is healing somebody, it's not, I hope this doesn't come back by next Tuesday. It is, you're free. Freedom means forever. Not freedom for this week or next week, freedom forever. You're now free. All this stuff you're carrying around with you that doesn't let you be a full person, Guess what? You're free of that now. Let it go. Everything you hate about yourself, let it go. Forever. And be a full person. And then, every time I heard the word Selig, can it be richer and more beautiful and mean Selig? So when you sing the word Zalek, it's not cantaloupe or <laughs> it's blessedness. And what we're here on earth to do is only to bless each other. So every action in your life, you're blessing someone. So I want every phrase to be a blessing, every phrase to be a blessing and Zalek, Zalek. Bless every person in your life. And as we do sometimes in rehearsal, if you want, think of somebody who you want to bless and bless them and bless them and bless them as you sing that last page. So the last page just opens and deepens in blessing and we feel the blessing in your sound. And let the word say, like, just come out of the phrase a little bit so that it's larger than the phrase.
That's super beautiful, you guys. Wow. Um, I would love to just, could we just do that one more time and go even farther with all those things? And just, if we could feel that the Zelig is part of, um, you know, again, what is known as the immeasurables, the things that you never run out of, which are compassion, courage, generosity. If I could get that Zelig is there. <laughs> So we're not going to run out of Zelig, so I can only give you this much today. <laughs> and oops, we're going, running low on Zelig, so we're going to just going to we're going to just parcel this out. <laughs> I want to get that the flow suddenly takes over, and the flow is the abundance of generosity. Is once you're generous, you are flowing, and there's no limit. And so just that it doesn't end in a measured way but it ends immeasurably and goes into this just incredible open space, you know, from a frightened person who needs to be taken by the hand to take their next step at the beginning and just gradually working through every one of these issues and then finally just, And feel free to zing, zing the zay like even more. Just really let it lift out of the phrase. Let it, let the phrase just give, so it gives the phrase this crazy buoyancy rather than just a line that's uninterrupted. So it's not just linear, there's this, right? One more time. One more time? Woo! <laughs> So those are two of the numbers in the first 27 sentences. You just heard two of the sentences. This piece opens with 27 of those and then goes into this big double motet and then goes into the infinite time and space. 
of the voices in eternity. <sighs> Thank you so much, Brent. These people are so amazing. Oh my God. And you people are so amazing for supporting these people. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think we're wrapping it up. So on, on behalf of the Master Chorale, uh, Peter, can I just say that this, this collaboration, this ongoing partnership, it's been 20 years now with the Master Chorale that we've been working together. And it's a big part of why the group has just transformed itself and is, I think, not only one of the, one of the great musical ensembles, but one of the most open-hearted groups of, of musicians on the planet. So thanks, you guys. And Peter, thank you for thank everything. You. Thanks, everybody. Have a, have a beautiful rest of the day.